the disciplining of the self, you know, this is a journey where we're trying to prom program ourselves to be a certain way to get what we want and not work for somebody. But sometimes it don't turn out that way in our daily life. Either it hasn't come together or we feel we're not disciplined enough or we just ain't got it yet, you know? And so we're on this journey trying to figure out the self. How could we be self-employed, self-motivated, you know, everything that we want so we could accomplish it? Well, the thing to it is that a lot of people you know, take on these classes, these services, or just read the posters that people post trying to guide them in the right direction. But the truth to it is the discipline begins within the mind. Self-control, you know, um, your demeanor. It's like we don't look at these little subtle things, but they have a profound effect in our reality. And I've seen this mostly, and I've read about it, really. And it says, you know, the mind itself is untrained. It's like an undisciplined stallion, a wild stallion. And you go and try to say, hey, I want to control my mind. I want to stop my thoughts. You see, you can't because it's a wild stallion. It always been doing what it want. It think what it want. It react how it want. It gets what it want. So when you do try to discipline it, frustration builds up or you feel there's no way to control it. And so with it now not being in control, our life is not in control. We feel we don't have a grip on what we want, how to get it, and to be self-motivated to work or to work for ourselves. And so now we don't know our journey, what we're gonna do, what, 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 what am I gonna do with myself? Those start to come in effect and you see other people doing it and I'm not there yet. You know, I'm gonna get there, you know, those type of things. Well, like I said, for you to get there now and to do those things that you're so, you know, seeing and you want done for yourself, it's the discipline, back to that. So how we get it to what we, I'm talking about to get what you want by being disciplined. Well, then it takes on a tone like this. You see, because we start first trying to control the mind and it seems like it can't be controlled, so we give up on it. But what I'm saying is the discipline is not about trying to control the mind, it's trying to control the self. How you control the self, it starts off first by you being able to sit still. I said, sit still. You see, the disciplining of the mind begin by you having control over the body. And if you have control over the body, you have control over the mind. So by sitting still, you've completed the first level of discipline in yourself. You'll be able to sit still. Now, how long you sit still, that's the next step. The longer you can sit still, the more of a discipline you have. Then you take it from there now, you know, you're gonna have all type of thoughts. You probably don't wanna do it or what's the purpose of this? So once you're able to sit still, you have to now get the mind to stop having thoughts or chitters. So the next step for you is to quiet the rippling of the waters in your mind. Those are thoughts, thoughts that don't serve you. If you're sitting in an empty room, there's nothing to do more than sit there. But if you're sitting in a room filled up with things, stereo on, TV on, maybe your mind's saying, yo, the TV's too loud. Yo, I can hear the kids in the background. Uh, 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 it's trying to distract you from the moment of sitting and make you focus on getting up to go do something or saying, nah, this ain't for me, or just frustration. So you will have to put yourself in a place where there's no distraction and it's just about you and your body. Once you do that, you could now Take yourself off your thoughts and your mind and focus more on your breath, your breathing, or maybe the pulse if you put your fingers together. These things now you take it into a few seconds at a time if you could do it and go deeper and deeper until you're able to acquire 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. These things now is the start of your journey into self-control. By you being able to control the mind and just sit there you're able to control your thoughts, your emotions, 
So if somebody's starting to yell at you and you're about to get upset, you could control that now and don't get upset and get your point across, this reasoning you're doing. You're not there to push something down somebody through or impose your will on them. So if you could now use that discipline and that you do when you learned it in meditation and apply it as your will, you will see forces come together and you're able to have more affirmation, more your word is what you mean and you're going to do what you say. It becomes action. But without the mind being trained, you're going to say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You have a big to-do list, but nothing is done. Because the mind have you busy, that's what you're doing, the mind part. And the pleasure part, which is the eating, going to hang out, calling your friend on social media. So you'll never get to the real action part, just the pleasure part and the thoughts. So now that she's able to see there's a difference between the three, you see, what you do in your thoughts reflects in your actions. So if you're able to discipline yourself and sit there and not actually move, after a while you see you'll be able to actually say you're going to do something and go through with it and accomplish it. And that's the beginning of how you start in your life now, by the discipline and actually practicing the stillness of your mind and stillness of your body. You're able to use your energy efficiently. So when you go to move, you're going to get something for that energy you're about to exhaust, which is what you're really here to do. You understand? That's when you get the theory of you're either a servant to yourself or you're going to be a servant to what you have to do, your purpose. So most of us is out here working to please our desires and not actually being the true purpose of what you're supposed to be. This will wake you up now to those type of things as you sit there trying to control your mind. You can't stop your thoughts, but you can narrow down your thoughts and you will see the things that serve you, that don't serve you, energy blockages such as things that you have too much of that's blocking you from seeing where you're supposed to go or things that <clears throat> is on your consciousness that's preventing you from having a peaceful moment. And you see those is what you have to sort out. Maybe you owe somebody an apology or maybe you see yourself doing something you didn't really feel comfortable doing. All these are sorted out in the self. And once you do that, you make peace with the self and the mind go back to rest again, which is at peace. But if you don't do these things, the mind will never at rest. You go through emotional stress, hypertension. It could be in the form of overeating or just eating to get rid of your emotions or feelings and it could get you sick and that's how you wind up seeing yourself get bigger age and all these other things so doing this meditations is the beginning of you unfolding your life unfolding your true purpose and it's not like i said the meditation part we didn't go into that it's just the stillness the discipline you know we'll call that discipline as part of what we say the beginning of what's called yoga, you know, union with your own energies, your own emotions, your own regrets, your own self inadequacies. All these things come into play now. Once you unite with them and you can't change what you're about to do, who you are at the moment, but having a better perception of it, raise your consciousness out of those um, negative forces, those dark energies, those that made us wear masks and not be ourselves and go and find our true purpose. And you say, well, I'm no, I felt like that and it did hinder me like if it was keeping me in a closet, a coffin. But once you reveal it and you acknowledge it, you know, you let it go and throw it in the trash. You out of that coffin. The coffin don't exist no more. You're free from it now and you move up, you know. These are the different stages of yourself that you have to unfold. And once you're able to do that, you're going to see the more experience you have, the more understanding you're going to have of yourself. By you having greater understanding of yourself, you understand the universe and you understand other people because there's nobody that's different as above, so below. So take this information and build off of it. The discipline of whatever you think you want to be, whatever you're going to do, don't start with books or YouTube videos. 
It start by you having the willpower to want to go out and do it, put it into action. All right. Lord, thank you, University of Conscious Science.